everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica, for those of you who are new here. And in today's video, as you can see by the title, I wanted to talk about my wedding and the wedding planning and everything that's been going on. Fortunately, everything has been more died down and more relaxed recently, but it was a while getting to this point. <laughs> I've been engaged since last Christmas and I'm getting married in March. And we've only been planning since July or August. So it's been a pretty quick planning. It's been like a three or four month planning period. So a lot has happened. A lot of friends of mine and a lot of girls that I know have had their weddings planned out for a really, really long time, or at least they know more or less of what they want. Um, I never did that. I just kind of knew that the dress was really important to me. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and I want my dad to walk me down the aisle, like, no matter what, and if my dad, fortunately, he, like, nothing has happened, but if, for any reason, my dad was no longer here, I wasn't going to get married, um, unless he was here. So that was a big stipulation of mine, and my fiancé knew that, like, if we waited however many years to get married, if something happened to my dad, we wouldn't get married. I'm not against being engaged, but I just didn't want to get married without my dad walking me down the aisle. But other than that, it's just kind of been planning it as we go. Um, we both kind of decided that we wanted our wedding to kind of be a mix of our life. So our life uh, was mostly in Texas or a little bit in Colorado as well for my fiance, but mostly like that rustic Texas vibe. But now our life is in California and Los Angeles and it's more of like m modern, I guess. Like in Texas, people like rustic turquoise and like all the curly Q fonts that I just don't really like and all that kind of stuff, which is totally fine if, if that's what you're into. Um, and out here I really like the modern kind of a vibe, so for our wedding I wanted to mix them together. So our venue is kind of like a barn, but it's painted white, so it's more modern, it's not like that wooden rustic look. And then I wanted to incorporate a lot of modern touches. Um, typically they, the venue hasn't done a ton of modern stuff in the past. I kind of showed the wedding venue owner kind of my vibe and she's kind of like the wedding planner as well. Um, so I kind of showed her what I wanted and we're gonna be able to combine the two and I'm really excited for that. Um, but growing up, I guess I had always assumed different things would be more stressful in wedding planning, like the venue and assembling everything. But to be honest, that part hasn't been that hard. We picked the venue, the venue we picked is so amazing. They let you have the whole entire um, place for a week. So it's not like a lot of venues charge you a ton and they want you in and out within a certain time slot that you book. So if you go over that time, they'll charge you extra. And so you have to get there and set everything up or have someone set it up and then you have to get people out and cleaned up in a short amount of time or in a certain amount of time or else you'll get charged. Fortunately, that's not the case with us. Ours has like cabins on the property. It actually used to be Willie Nelson's, one of his properties for something a long time ago. So that's really cool. I just wanted to talk about stuff that like I didn't see coming in my wedding. Um, of course, a lot of it I hadn't planned, but when I was when I was really younger, I had this one friend who was also my college roommate. We'll just give her a, a different name. We'll just say her name is Katie, KT for the sake of this video. And she doesn't watch YouTube and she's not on social media or anything, so like I have no, like she's not gonna see this anyway. But grow up, like she, she was my best, best friend for a very long time. We were college roommates, we met when we were like seven, um, the whole nine yards. And we would watch TV all the time together, we'd watch Bride Wars with Anne Hathaway and Kate Hudson, we'd watch like all the bridal movies and we just thought that was so funny because she's kind of more reserved and more like stay home and watch Netflix. And during that time period in college, I was more like, let's go out, like I'm a social butterfly, kind of opposite. Um, I had a lot of friends and I wanted to be out and doing things and she wanted to kind of be more reserved and at home. So it was an interesting dynamic um, and it really worked well for us as friends. And so I had always pictured her being in my wedding. Like, I, we used to talk about like, oh, would you be my maid of honor or would one of your sisters or my sister be, like who would be the maid of honor, her? or my sister, and like she would have the same question on her end, like, oh, my sister would kill me if I picked you over her and all this stuff. So, what we had a falling out. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> to be honest. Um, all this stuff happened, she went off to the Peace Corps. I don't even know what happened, to be honest. Um, you know, she was studying for her finals in college, and at this time we were no longer roommates. Long story short, I was gonna move to New York, 
I was planning on going to the New York Film Academy for a long time, and then she found another roommate because I was going to leave, and then I changed my mind last minute. So she had a different roommate uh, towards the end of college, and she was studying for a final, and so I know she loves uh, Taco Bell, which I don't, but that's totally fine. I found her favorite Taco Bell things, and I packaged them up as a study snack, and I called her, and she wasn't answering. So I just drove to her house, and I walked in, and I was actually going to introduce her to my now fiancé. I was going to introduce her to him, because that's when we first started being friends, not dating. Um, and I took the stuff to her, and she just kind of gave me a dirty look and was like, thanks. And I was like, what happened, man? We were just friends, like, yesterday. Like, I don't understand. And then she joined the Peace Corps without telling me. I knew, like, she was going to soon, but I didn't know, like, she was going to move to Africa or anything like that, like, immediately. Like, she moved to Africa, and I didn't even know. And we were, like, lifelong best friends. So, um, we're no longer friends. Um, we don't talk at all. I saw her at a wedding once last year, but she basically, like, ghosted me. Everyone knows, like, that term. <laughs> so, she basically just left me hanging moved to Africa, and then I saw her at a wedding once since that time period that was like four or five years ago, which is so weird because we were so inseparable. So, like, it just kind of sucks that she's not gonna, she's not even invited. I don't even know where she lives. I don't know what she does. I don't know anything about her life. She's not really interested either in, like, talking with me at that wedding we went to. I had talked with her a little bit, and we were get you know, we were, everything was fine. And then she didn't even say bye when she left the wedding, and I was like, what happened? Like, I would have at least thought she would have said bye to me and my fiancé, so there's that. And then something else is, like, <sighs> something else is, like, my sister is not going to be in my wedding, which pisses off a lot of people. Not Not my sister, but, like, my family members are all, like, really pissed and it's really really weird because I miss like being being in California being in California a lot has changed mine and my fiance's mentalities are completely different we think of things in life very broad very like I want to help people in a big way like that's our long-term plan it's to do really really big things in the world we have a lot of ideas and stuff we want to do and invest in a lot of stuff and just think differently we don't think like in a small town mentality at one point we did um, but now that we're here we no longer do and it's almost like our minds have changed so incredibly much so I can't relate to a ton of people anymore that I'm still friends with it's and like I, I don't have a problem with that but I just feel really lonely and the reason why I'm not inviting my sister to be in my wedding we did have a falling out um, as well due to like a bunch of crap that is a really really long and depressing story that I'm not going to get into the reason why she's not going to be in my wedding though is because she's no longer we're no longer compatible personalities whatsoever you know sisters have their fights and stuff but we're just mentally in two different places our goals our life our value like everything is completely different at this point and it's kind of been growing that way for a long time so it just sucks because like the person who she was maybe four or five years ago i would have loved to have in my wedding and i think that would have been really really great and you know we were we were really close and stuff so um it's not like anyone drove that wedge between us we just grew apart and a bunch of different things and it's unfortunate because it's pissing off a lot of people right now neither neither her or I have any beef like I don't have any beef with her I'm just sad that we've grown so far apart um, I love her she's wonderful but it's just she's not very supportive of me anymore and you know I don't even know what's really going on in her life anymore we don't really talk either she's my only sister by the way she's my older sister so it's kind of weird I'm also the first one getting married in my family out of the two of us um, so that's kind of weird. I didn't see that coming. Like, when I was younger, I always thought Katie would be in my wedding and my sister would be in my wedding, and one of them would for sure be the maid of honor. Now, I think I've decided I'm not going to have a maid of honor at my wedding, um, which is totally fine. I just don't really have a close girlfriend, especially in LA. I've selected some bridesmaids, some of my oldest, long, lifelong friends, and they're really, really great, and I'm excited for them to be a part of my bride tribe, I guess is what people call it. But I will not have a maid of honor. Which I'm not mad about whatsoever. Like, it's totally fine. The big elephant in the room at this point is 
that we're not having children at our wedding, under 10. Um, it's so funny because there's a family member um, on, my, on my mom's side of the family that the whole family says that I am very much so like in the way that I talk and the way that I act and stuff like that. And it, we're just kind of like bubbly and quirky out of the family. And she actually had a rule that she wanted. She wanted no kids and she fought her family on it. And because she doesn't watch YouTube and no one has her knows her name or anything about her, the reason why she ended up with me at her wedding and like the other kids is because she negotiated with her mom and she got a boob job. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. So she ended up like negotiating and was like, okay, if you give me a boob job before my wedding, I'll have kids <laughs> at the wedding. That's hilarious. I'm not interested in that, but I thought that that story was hilarious the first time I heard it when I was an adult. Anyway, we're not doing the whole boob job thing. I'm just no kids. Um, I explained to my mom, and it's so funny because my mom was like, no, you need to have kids. What about all your cousins and your, you know, my fiance Tim's family, blah, blah, blah. And I'd explain to her, like, my concerns. And she was like, now that you mention it, a lot of people, a lot of kids on our side of the family are wild children and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I just, when I go to weddings and I see it being like, all these kids like jumping around in the middle of the dance floor and everyone's like, oh my god, these kids. And I'm just like, they're screaming. They're not cute. They're like making a scene. Like I just, I just don't want any part of that. I don't want screaming kids. I don't want messy things. And I especially don't want to break anything because the, uh, the venue does provide like pretty much everything but the food. So, and she's bringing out like special silverware or not special silver. She's bringing out, she's bringing out like special china and like all this stuff just for us that she only brings out for like special people like her family members weddings and stuff so i'm like yeah no kids because i don't want to be breaking all her stuff either so that's another unpopular opinion it's just something that i'm just not really interested in my fiance is not interested in either he's kind of more likely to be swayed like sometimes he's like well it wouldn't be bad and i'm like i don't think it's a good idea like we've seen a ton of kids around dinner time and feeding time and it's just a huge shit show to say the less the least so we're just not doing kids at our wedding another thing going back to the people at my wedding what i wasn't expecting i'm gonna run through this real quick so we just don't get emotional today is that i kind of pictured like i have a bunch of guy best friends back home and i had always pictured like a handful of them being in my fiance's like a dude party what's it called roomsman party man party whatever it's called the people that he stands with and one of them is no longer with us. He passed suddenly in an accident in uh, last January. And he's like, no offense to like my dudes, like I love my guy friends, but they know that one of them was just a little, I just like loved him a little bit more. Not that I didn't love, all, like I love them all equally, but one of them was just, he's like my baby, like he is my everything. He's like my little brother. So like, if that sounds weird, that's why he's like, I don't know, he's just like my little brother. I had always imagined him out of everyone. Like, of course, like I would pick two or three of the guys to hopefully be in my fiance's party. He's also friends with them because we lived in my hometown for a period of time and so he's good friends with them too. But I had always pictured him as being like the for sure one that like would be a part of the wedding and like he loves to watch me and my fiance dance because we're, we're country dancers or, you know, we still kind of are but we don't do it as much anymore. And like he always liked to watch us dance and learn from us. Uh, about dance and all this stuff so it's really weird that he's not gonna be there like I don't like to think about it I don't really like to talk about it but I had to include it because it is really important to me so we're gonna move along from that topic and the last thing I wanted to talk about today was the shit show of wedding dress shopping I went to three stores and I tried on about 30 dresses for my to find my perfect wedding dress. I was actually really worried that I wasn't gonna have that like moment that you see if you watch Say Yes to the Dress and like the girls start crying and they're all emotionally attached to the dress. I wasn't having that. I went to three stores and it just wasn't happening and I was like, is there something wrong with me? Like maybe, okay, the problem I was having, which is also a problem that I wasn't expecting, is that all the dresses looked pretty good on, but I think my mother-in-law and my mom had a really good point that they said, you look like a model, you don't look like a bride. So I kept putting on all this stuff and it looked really nice on and it looked really flattering, but like, I didn't look like a bride. I didn't feel like a bride. I felt beautiful in them because they're like really nice dresses and of course I don't try on stuff like that very often, but I didn't feel like a bride, but I felt pretty. 
and I tried on one last dress and the funny thing is is at the third store we went to I had tried on maybe like four dresses already and I didn't like I found stuff that was pretty I made my mother-in-law cry which I thought was I felt so bad because I wanted to pick that one to like make her happy but I was like no Jessica like you need to pick one you love not just because people are getting emotional and this woman that was helping me at the store the, the employee she had grabbed a dress and they put the dresses in these big zipper bags so like you can't really see what they are until you unzip them and you bring them in and she pulled it I have poor vision and she was like across the room I could barely see you know anything because I didn't have my glasses on and um, I said I want that one and I turned to my friend Julian and I pointed at this dress and I said, I want that one. Like, I, if that one's, I really like that one. And I couldn't even see it yet, but it's so crazy. It ended up being the one. It was just like my intuition already knew that was my dress. I had tried it on and it was beautiful. And then they added some stuff to it, the veil and everything. And in the dressing room, the mirror wasn't a full length mirror. It was just like part of the way down. So like I knew it was pretty, but I couldn't see the full thing. And I locked out onto the little podium thing that you stand on where I could see the full thing and it was exactly what I wanted. Your girl started bawling. I, I could not believe that I had that moment. Like I looked at it for one second and I was like crying already. And my mom was like, are you okay? I'm like, this is a dress. Like, you know, luckily it wasn't ugly tears. It was just like a sweet sob. So like, I didn't look like a hot mess, only like a slight mess. But yeah, I found my dress, but before we got to that point in the day, so I had went to one dress shop on like a Friday with my mom and my grandma. And then I went to the dress shop with like the whole gang of women on the second day. And I had two dress shops to go to that day. The first day, you know, we found some stuff that I liked, but not anything that I was in love with. And then the second day we started at one dress place. And this is the place that like me and my mother-in-law both thought I would for sure find a dress at. Like their website was beautiful, their selection was really nice, really in tune with what I wanted. It was right next to my grandma's house in San Antonio and we were like, okay, we're probably gonna find it here. And I actually, actually debated for hours in the morning if we were gonna make it to that final appointment where I actually found my dress. And I was saying like, oh, we should just cancel that appointment because it's gonna, it's way further away and all this crap. And I ended up finding my dress there. Thank God I didn't cancel that stupid appointment. Um, so I went to this bridal place in San Antonio with the whole gang and holy heck and Bob, it was just too much, too much. So my appointment was for an hour, which first off for wedding dress trying on, unless you know exactly what you like and what dress you want. I knew more or less of what I wanted. Like I, I had a million pictures on my phone. Like these are the dresses I like. They had a lot of them in the store and I was like, perfect. Like I've been dying to try on these dresses and I was trying them on. I was like a number. It was not like a magical bridal experience. It was like, okay, this one, no, 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 no. yes, no, yes, no. I was like, I was so stressed. And I'm not like a, let me get super stressed out kind of a gal. Like, I'm pretty chill. I don't have anxiety or anything like that. I'm just like mentally like, we're just, we're just chilling. We're just hanging out, you know? We asked to put on a veil, which you do want to do when you're trying on dresses because um, it kind of gives the full effect as opposed to like just looking at a pretty dress and we were like, hey, can we put on the veil? She was like, no, no, not until you pick your favorite two and then we'll put on the veil with those two. And I'm like, dude, like, come on. And she was the owner of the store. <sighs> it just got so incredibly messy. And I was like, can I try on this one? She's like, no, 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 we don't have any more time. So you can pick out one or two. And I'm like, dude, like she just wanted to make a sale on me. Like, that's it. It was not like. A pleasurable experience like I was frantic and I was stressing and like she was just zipping them on to be up but like at all the other stores it was like calm it was like loving it was like let's try on this let's put on this headpiece let's look at everything like it was a really nice experience and I was sure to let them know on Yelp because I'm an avid Yelper but let's just say it was so incredibly chaotic and the woman was so incredibly rude actually in the middle of my appointment I was like changing back into my outfit and instead of like taking the time to talk to me about everything. She was on her computer and she was like, what's the name of my, she had to like hop over where my family was sitting and she was like, excuse me, I find the name of my next bride. And I was like, I found that out later. I'm like, really? Like you're not even focused on what you're trying to do here and like providing an experience. And it's a really nice store with really nice dresses. It's not just like a quick little shop with a few things. It was just, 
Too messy, too much. Actually, we went to lunch after that bridal shop and I had a martini. I don't, I'm not a day drinker. I don't drink at lunch. I really don't drink at dinner. I drink about once every two months. I had a martini at lunch. That's how bad it was. And I was like feeling good and it was funny because none of my family members noticed except my friend Jillian. She's the only like younger person of the bunch. Like everyone was like, you know, adult age, which is weird because I'm an adult, but you know, like middle-aged or older, like my grandma. And me and my friend Jillian, she's sitting there and I was like, Ooh, how are we doing? Let's do this. And no one noticed. And I felt really good going into that third appointment. Luckily, I was able to find my dress as I told y'all. And it was a pleasant experience after that, but it was just like, it's too much. For wedding dress shopping, I wasn't what I expected. So what I'll tell y'all is about the wedding dress budget I had, I was worried because like I love Berta. Some, if you just look up Ber the wedding dress brand Berta or Galia La Have or something like that, those are two of the styles that you'll see all over Pinterest and those are the two brands that I really lean towards their aesthetic. And I thought, oh my God, those dresses are, I think they start at like $8,000 and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna pay $8,000 for a dress but I want one like that. And I was so worried because like, I've just seen dresses a lot of people wear in the past that I know. And I just, I never like any of my friends' dresses. And I thought, great, like, because my budget is under $8,000, it's much under $8,000. I thought I wasn't gonna find anything. Um, I went way under budget. I will say dresses between 1,300 and under 2,000, there is a ton of really, really beautiful options that look very similar to Berta and the Gallia Le Have brands. Um, so if anyone, that, that was my biggest concern. I was like, okay, if my budget's not at least like $8,000, like what am I gonna do? I went way under budget. They didn't try to sell me on anything expensive. I think each shop showed me one dress over budget and I didn't like them at all. So um, just know between like 1,300 and 2,000 is where I found like the best dresses in my opinion and that's way under my budget. If y'all wanna know anything else about the wedding planning or have any questions, because I'm very new to this as well, I'm 25 years old, like I'm the first one in my family to get married, I have a lot of really dumb questions. For instance, my fiance and I are so dumb, we thought that your save the dates go after your invitations. That's incorrect, we didn't even know. You send out your save the dates and then you send out your invitations. Like him and I had to get a second opinion. His sister told us and we were like, no, there's no way. And we were like asking my mom and Googling it and it turns out we're just idiots. So if y'all have any questions about the planning, let me know. I'm an open book. It's gonna be a fun time. Everything's pretty much set in stone now and I'll add up some photos of inspiration for my wedding so y'all can just kind of get the vibe that I'm going for. Also, people were like, oh my God, your flower's gonna cost $10,000. It's gonna be so expensive, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, great. Like the last thing I wanna do is spend $10,000 on flowers. And I talked to my wedding planner and she showed me pictures of weddings that had a similar amount of flowers that we want. And they're way, way cheaper. Like it's between two and three, I think maybe two and 4,000, which is way better than we thought was gonna be. Like we literally, like my mom was like, it's gonna be like 10 or $20,000. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna spend that much on flowers. I guess I'm gonna have a flowerless wedding. No, no, no. She was definitely wrong on that one. Um, the wedding venue, we're only inviting like 75 to 85 people. It'll be like under 100 people for sure with plus ones. So that's like the size and the amount of flowers and stuff we're gonna be having. We're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of flowers. So I was very surprised at the budget. I think it's gonna be like 2,000 or 3,000 for flowers. So I was very happy about that. Like I swear, I thought weddings were gonna be so much more expensive and then here they are and they're really not that bad. Like. I'm really punk. At least, so, at least like in my mind, like I, I had always set the bar like, oh my God, weddings are gonna be like $50,000. This is gonna be insane. Which, you know, they could be for some people that wanna have like that crazy wedding. But like, I think mine is gonna be beautiful, not super big. I think like, I don't know if it's a medium sized wedding or a small wedding. I think, I think it's like small, medium maybe. So I think it's gonna be nice and cute. Anyway, that's enough wedding talk for today. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. If y'all have any other questions, about all this fun stuff, but let me know. Um, if, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about doing like a fiance, get to know my fiance type of video, because he hasn't really been on my channel much, and I know a lot of people don't really know him. So if y'all want to know about him or anything like that, he's a goofy guy. 
we kind of are yin and yang, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're very opposite, but it's a good balance. We have, like, a good meshing point there in the middle, so. Anyway, if y'all enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, I would love to be creating more content about this wedding adventure. Um, and be sure to subscribe if you want to stick around and learn about me, my life, and all this fun stuff. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye!